Chapter Four of Among the Meadow People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Claire. Among the Meadow People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. Chapter Four. The Lazy Snail. In the lower part of the meadow, where the grass grew tall and tender, there lived a fine and sturdy young snail. That is to say, a fine-looking snail. The shell was a beautiful soft grey, and its curves were regular and perfect. His body was soft and moist, and just what a snail's body should be. Of course, when it came to travelling, he could not go fast, for none of his family are rapid travellers. Still, if he had been plucky and patient, he might have seen much of the meadow and perhaps some of the world outside. His friends and neighbours often told him that he ought to start out on a little journey to see the sights, but he would always answer, Oh, it is too hard work. There was nobody who liked stories of meadow life better than this same snail, and he would often stop some friendly cricket or snake to ask for the news. After they had told him, they would say, Why don't you ever get out to see these things for yourself? And he would give a little sigh and answer, It is too far to go. But you needn't go the whole distance in one day, his visitor would say, only a little at a time. Yes, and then I would have to keep starting on again every little while, the snail would reply. What of that? said the visitor. You would have plenty of resting spells when you could lie in the shade of a tall weed and enjoy yourself. Well, what is the use? the snail would say. I can't enjoy resting if I know I've got to go to work again, and he would sigh once more. So there he lived, eating and sleeping, and wishing he could see the world, and meet the people in the upper part of the meadow but just so lazy that he wouldn't start out to find them. He never thought that the butterflies and beetles might not like it to have him keep calling to them and making them tell him the news. Oh, no, indeed! If he wanted them to do anything for him, he asked them quickly enough, and they, being happy, good-natured people, would always do as he asked them to. There came a day, though, when he asked too much. The grasshoppers had been telling him about some very delicious new plants that grew a little distance away, and the snail wanted some very badly. "'Can't you bring me some?' he said. "'There are so many of you, and you have such good strong legs. I should think you might each bring me a small piece in your mouths, and then I should have a fine dinner of it.' The grasshoppers didn't say anything then, but when they were so far away that he could not hear them, they said to each other, "'If the snail wants the food so much, he might better go for it. We have other things to do. And they hopped off on their own business. The snail sat there and wondered and wondered that they did not come. He kept thinking how he would like some of the new food for dinner, but there it ended. He didn't want it enough to get it for himself. The grasshoppers told all their friends about the snail's request, and everybody thought, Such a lazy, good-for-nothing fellow deserves to be left quite alone. So it happened that for a very long time nobody went near the snail. The weather grew hotter and hotter. The clouds which blew across the sky kept their rain until they were well past the meadow, and so it happened that the river grew shallower and shallower, and the sunshine dried the tiny pools and rivulets that kept the lower meadow damp. The grass began to turn brown and dry, and all in all it was trying weather for snails. One day a butterfly called some of her friends together and told them that she had seen the snail lying in his old place, looking thin and hungry. The grass is all dried around him, she said. I believe he is starving and too lazy to go nearer the river, where there is still good food for him. They all talked it over together, and some of them said it was of no use to help a snail who was too lazy to do anything for himself. Others said, well, he is too weak to help himself now, at all events, and we might help him this once. And that is exactly what they did. The butterflies and the mosquitoes flew ahead to find the best place to put the snail, and all the grasshoppers and beetles and other strong crawling creatures took turns in rolling the snail down toward the river. They left him where the green things were fresh and tender, and he grew strong and plump once more. It is even said that he was not so lazy afterward, but one cannot tell whether to believe it or not, for everybody knows that when people let themselves grow up lazy as he did, it is almost impossible for them to get over it when they want to. One thing is sure, the meadow people who helped him were happier and better for doing a kind thing, no matter what became of the snail. End of chapter 4
Recording by Claire.